but we have similar philosophies. Why would it be any different in your own practice? Why do we think that we can't surround ourselves with people we actually like as we serve them? So many of us, I find, we're thinking, okay, we just need to treat people. We need, everyone needs help, everyone needs service, everyone needs chiropractic care. I 100% agree. It does not mean that they have to be served by you. Because who I attract and who I love to treat and who creates that fire in my belly is not necessarily the same as who Dr. Rick Wren likes to attract and likes to treat. Or Dr. Barnes, Dr. Cottingham. We all have different loves, and so for us to be able to serve at our highest level, we have to figure out who that is. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, do you ever feel like a peacock in a land of penguins? Has anyone ever heard this before? Yes? So I, I am borrowing this from a corporate strategy. I'm not gonna talk about it in that way. But what it's talking about is creativity in a society that loves conformity, tradition, and stability. And I'm gonna talk about this in two ways. First, how many of us as young chiropractors joined an existing practice as an associate? Or, yes, or had a parent or a grandparent that was a chiropractor? So we're sitting there and we come in and we're the peacocks. We're like, woo, look at us, we're shiny, we're creative, we're having a good time. We have all these awesome ideas and we wanna do this and this and this. And initially they think, hey, that seems kinda good. Not bad. And then as you push a little bit further, they go, whoa, no, 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 no. This is how we do it here. This is what works. It's worked for the last 40 years, and I guarantee it's gonna keep working, and it's working for you, and that's what you're gonna do. Those are the penguins. There's nothing wrong with the penguins, but they're not gonna attract who the peacocks are gonna attract. Right? Make sense? So what you need to do is figure out what your ideal patient is and utilize that in the strategies you choose for marketing and for attracting them. Now, peacocks, I'm gonna speak from experience. I was a new grad, I tend to have a lot of ideas. I tend to kind of like go, whoo, this is my idea and I'm gonna go for it and I think about it later. So that's what I did and I recreated everything. And I spent hours and weeks and I came up with these posters and I'm like, this is what's gonna be amazing, this is what changes. And the doc I was associating for, he's like, okay, run with it. And then I presented it to him, and he pulls up on his computer. He's like, yeah, so this is something very similar that I've had that I offered to you that we've been using for 20 years. I'm like, oh, so there is something to that. But what we need to recognize is we need to tweak it. Don't recreate the wheel. Take that information, whether it's from coaching companies, whether it's um, policies that have been around for a long time and tweak it so it serves you, so it honors you. The, uh, whew, the other, th it just popped on me, sorry. The other thing that I wanna use that analogy for is I'm a chiropractor that specializes in, and I focus on prenatal, pediatrics, and fertility. I wanna focus on the fertility because let me tell you, when I've walked into a fertility clinic, I am definitely a peacock in the land of penguins. They're looking at me like, huh, chiropractor, fertility. I don't see it, I don't get it. So you have to come up with ways to be creative to educate those penguins to embrace how that can help. If you try to attract everyone, uh, everybody, your business attracts no one. No one wants a jack or jill of all trades. They want someone who is focused, who loves a specific thing, who says, I've done extra schooling on that. This is what I choose to focus on and specialize in. We all want to be VIPs. I don't care who you are, you want to be a VIP. So that's what we need to serve for our patients. Stop focusing on what you are not and start choosing to work with who you are. How many of us have heard over and over, people need to see more children? We need to be treating more children. Yes, really? There were five hands. <laughs> Thank you. So yes, that's the case, but does that mean that all of you enjoy treating children? A colleague of mine, it gives him the heebie-jeebies when a baby is put in his hands. So they don't put it in his hands. The CA sets the baby on the table, he adjusts them, 
And he's like, Whew, hands off, walk away. Once they can talk and move around, he's like, okay, I can have a dialogue, but it freaks him out. Why? He's stressed, like he sweats, he's sitting there, he's like, okay, I'm good, I can handle this. Why do we put ourselves through that? There are so many chiropractors out there who absolutely love it. I love ooey gooey squishy little freshies. Love them. I love that they smell like breast milk puke. I love that. I love that they snuggle up. I love that they breathe on me. I love that they try and latch onto my forearm. Not everyone enjoys that, but I love it. It drives me, it fuels me. When I see a day almost full of newborns and young babies, love it. It energizes me. If it is something that drains you, refer it out. Why do we always think we can't work together? Is it serving you? No. But more importantly, is it serving those patients you're putting your hands on? Absolutely not. They are not getting your best. And they could get their best somewhere else. So refer it. Guess what? They'll refer it back when they're no longer freshy, ooey gooey, squishy babies. Because they're like, I don't want those eight-year-olds. They'll refer it back. So focus on that. Learn who you are, what you love. Create your client avatar. So I want to talk about the client avatar referring to Fertility for Minds. I'm going to take you through the steps on how I broke through those barriers. Because there's a lot of docs who might think, I see a lot of patients who have trouble getting pregnant, and they get pregnant, but they don't necessarily actually focus on fertility. And I focus on fertility to the point that fertility clinics all the time refer directly to our clinics specifically for chiropractic care for their patients. And I think that's pretty awesome. So what we need to do, I want to share a story first. In 2003, I had my baby girl. I was in ninth trimester. It was a little sooner than I anticipated having my baby girl. I had a whisper in my ear, maybe we should try in six months, and I was pregnant. So I was like, huh, oh, ninth try, board exams, new baby, awesome. <laughs> we got through it. But at the same time, my sister was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma of the cervix. Cervix. One of 11 cases worldwide known. The youngest case ever. She chose to go to the medical route and do chemotherapy, radiation. To do that, they would have to cut her fallopian tubes and move her ovaries, attach them to her abdomen so they wouldn't get fried. So she said, I better preserve my fertility. And so what they did was, with her boyfriend at the time, they've been dating three months, they chose to create embryos. And so at the end of that, she got 18 kidsicles and then went through her care. I just had a baby and I thought, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine this. So I said, if you ever need me, I will carry this baby for you. She never thought it would happen. I always had an inkling that this might be the case. Now, whether that was self-preservation or whether it was actually my intuition telling me it was going to happen, that's what I focused on. But what we also needed to look at was what else is going to happen here? So she went about her business, and as I graduated, I started seeing more fertility patients. So many times there's circumstances in our life that drive us to attract a new patient, and we don't always know why. Doesn't mean it's not naturally right. So you need to have a simple yet detailed profile of your ideal client. I was seeing more and more fertility patients, and what I did was I was clear. Not that I only wanted this specific age group. I treat people preconception all the way to individuals who have IVF that has failed and are trying on their own again. Everyone in between. But the detailed part that was important to me was that they were invested in their health. They were invested in, part, in being part of the team. That they were willing to do whatever I recommended, within reason, to assist in this process. And that they understood that this is improving their health, even if it doesn't mean they're gonna end up with a baby. That was my detailed profile. You need to connect with them on an emotional level. Now, how did that happen with the patients? As I was going through, I was seeing them, I was connecting with them, I understood a little bit because I thought, okay, I've learned from the patients I've seen, but what I didn't understand was once my sister called me, and I got this call, and on the other end was a broken woman. Tears. That's all she could get out. 
And then I got it. I went, oh, that's what it feels like to know someone. Not to do it, not to experience it, but to know someone in your heart gave me a different understanding, a different emotional connection to my patients. And she just said to me, I think you need to step up to the plate. They had tried multiple times to transfer those embryos, and from all the radiation, her uterus couldn't become thick enough. The lining wouldn't get thick enough, so she couldn't carry. What happened next, I didn't expect when I offered. You go through every single test that a fertility patient goes through if you are choosing to be a surrogate. So I went into my family doctor and to do the routine blood test. 17 vials later, 17. I'm like, I am a, I'm a little person. What are you doing? They kept taking. My husband had to go in 12 vials of blood for him. Like, what are you testing us for? Everything. And why did he have to go through it? Just in case I was pregnant and we decided to be intimate and he happened to be out romping around and it might pass me and I might not be a good host for this. That's why they took 12 vials from him. And then you also get to go through sonohistogram, sailing into your uterus. Wow, that's fun. See if it's a good, if you're a happy host. You go through psychological evaluation. You meet with lawyers. You talk about contracts. This is before it's even deemed if you're acceptable. And then you go through the process. But what this allowed me to have was an experience in a fertility clinic from the inside. You sit there, everyone around you has one goal. They want to have a baby. Everyone sitting there looks down and doesn't talk to anyone. Because heaven forbid you see someone else, oh, then they know I can't have a baby on my own. It is eerily quiet. It is stress. Women waiting for blood tests to see if they're ovulating. Women waiting for blood tests to see if they're pregnant. Women waiting for ultrasounds to see if now they finally got pregnant, but is it actually viable? Women in there happy as could be because they actually are pregnant, but scared to show how excited they are because of all the other people around who are suffering. That's what these patients are dealing with. So that gave me an understanding of how much they needed us. I am not saying to have an ideal patient that you have to live what they've lived, but you have to understand, immerse yourself in listening to what they say so you can truly understand what's going on so you can speak their language. Once you've identified their pain points, their fears, their frustrations, their desires, their dreams, what are their dreams? Their dreams are to have a baby. The dreams are to have a family. Their fears are that their significant other is not going to love them because they're cray-cray on the drugs. Like, we're talking crazy, some of them. I'm not joking. And they literally come into the clinic, and you have to actively listen to them because they don't know where else to turn. And then take the time to get into their heads. You can do this with any ideal patient. You can do this with infants. You can do this with children. Infants, who here, when you're staring into an infant's eyes, I swear it's an eight to an eight. They don't need to say a thing. All you have to do is take that pause, that moment to connect. The same goes for every patient that comes into your clinic. Get out of your own way. Cool thing happened. Once I became a surrogate, and it's actually almost seven years to the day that I had my niece. But one thing that happened was I all of a sudden attracted a whole new range of patients. I got a call. I answered it. She said, hello, it's Melissa. I said, hello, Melissa. I don't know who you are, but that's great. And she's from a pharmaceutical company. She said, I would like you to come and do a talk on the team approach to fertility, to our reproductive endocrinologist. I said, ah, uh, you do know I'm a chiropractor, right? She's like, absolutely. What we've discovered is if we can educate our REs about the team approach and all the other things that will assist their patients, it will end up serving our patients better. But in the end, it gives them better stats. It works. So I said, of course, sure, I'll do that. 
And then I got off the phone and I went, oh my gosh, I better come up with a talk and I have to figure this out. What this actually taught me is the more educated the person you are presenting to is, if it is not in their tiny little wheelhouse, you better speak like a layperson. So my talk about team approach to reproductive endocrinologists is almost identical to the talk I do on boosting your fertility to the lay public. And they were fascinated and they loved it. And so they thought, this is amazing. Think outside the box of how far reaching you can go so you can attract even more. Attract outside of the room. Like I said, I get referrals from all of them. I get referrals from around the country, which I refuse to have them come and see me because we're trying to decrease cortisol and stress. The last thing they need to do is hop on a plane, fly and see me, and then fly home. Like, that's not going to serve you. I will find you someone near you. I want you to get clear on your vision. Vision is critical. We need to know who we're attracting, what we're trying to attract, and making sure everything in our practice and what we do is congruent with that vision. So here's a picture of me. This is from a Parker in San Diego a few years ago. I took a surfing lesson. I was with actually Dr. Kip. We stayed an extra day. Now, I'm one of those people that I, I had never surfed. In my mind, I was like, awesome. So I said, surfing, I can do this. That's pretty big waves. Here I am, this is us dry land. So you lay on the board and they're like, paddle, paddle. You're like, okay, paddle, paddle, paddle. And then you pop up. And then they had, we had a photographer taking pictures because we thought this would be cool. This is literally me. And I swear, I was like, I'm riding the wave. Look at me go, I'm cruising. I don't know all the lingo, but I was like, I'm, I'm shredding this gnarly thing, but I'm on the sand. So you need to get clear on your vision and think it. My next vision is I plan on being on stage talking about the team approach and chiropractic specifically to the Canadian and the American reproductive endocrinology infertility conferences because they need to know that chiropractic is critical for their patients because those people need us. Your vision doesn't have to be that big. It can be whatever you want, but it's your vision. So get clear and set up the steps that are needed. You get your vision, create the steps to get to that point. As you get partway, reevaluate. You have to redo the steps. Network. Talk to people, ask for referrals, tell them what you want, and then work. I hate to tell you, it takes work to get your ideal patient. It takes work for a vision to be met. You have to go and you have to work hard for it. If you don't want to do that much work, hire a team that is willing to help you with that work. Doesn't mean you have to abandon the vision. Surround yourself with people that will assist you. Do what you do best and surround yourself with others that, that are great at that aspect. So when we're talking ideal patients, let's go back to, let's say we want to do seniors. Seniors are not my ideal patient. When I was learning to practice honing my speaking skills as a young chiropractor, I did what I call the senior circuit. Have any of you done the senior circuit? Every two weeks I went to a different senior home, nursing home. It was, you know, walker room only. I had an avid audience every time. And they shuffle in, they sit there. Let me tell you, they are tough. They know their stuff because they studied it for the last two weeks, figuring out their, their granddaughter showed them how to use Google and figure out all the information they needed. So you better know it. Now, I don't want to attract seniors, but I definitely utilized that and understood them better. And that actually allowed me to understand that I will serve, and I have some amazing seniors in my practice, but that's not my ideal patient. Because I tend to have a higher volume, faster pace practice. They need a slower pace, time for lots of questions. So either you have an amazing CA who's willing to spend that extra 20 minutes with them talking about whatever it is they need to talk about, because that's part of their healing, or you find a practice that loves seniors. So this is a little video just about knowing your audience and figuring out um, that our practice is actually congruent with who we're trying to attract. Oh God, I'm supposed to take it, okay. 
kind of weird. Looks like a science fiction movie. I think you can see a screen up here yeah, when yeah, you put it on. Yeah. No, that wouldn't work. Spaceship 12 calling Earth. Spaceship 12 calling Earth. Do you have any idea what it is? This looks like my hearing aid. Looks like some kind of a video game or something. So the way to use Google Glass is you'll actually speak to it. You're kidding. It'll do anything I say? No, it has oh, specific okay. commands. But oh, okay. So the first thing we're going to have you do is take a picture with it. Whoa. OK, Glass. Glass OK, what was it? OK, Glass. OK, Glass, uh, take a picture. You must sign in. You must sign in. How do I sign in without a pen? Got it. Yay, there it is. Holy smokes, that's awesome. What are you thinking? I'm thinking this is incredible. I got to get these. Modern stuff is crazy, man. How much do these things cost? That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I don't like it, though. OK, Glass. Google, I'm going to ask a question. What's the weather like tomorrow? 84 degrees and partly cloudy and bang, bang, bang. Thank you. It doesn't talk back. Oh. Special typo machine? Why is it? Oh my god. Oh! What does that mean when I move this stuff? So, what does a typewriter do? Type. It's a computer. Well, no, it's not a computer. How does it work? I actually really don't know. Let's explore. I type like that, but then, here, I'll just try to get it to the end. And then, this is fun. How do you load the paper? Huh? <laughs> In here? Uh-oh. I think I just broke it. It looks really ancient. Oh my gosh. I feel so fancy. I can't FaceTime, and I can't do messages, I can't do walk, I can't, can't play a game. I feel so bad for you guys, but you're probably like, how do you use this MacBook? It takes a very long time to write these things. In order to delete, you need to use something called whiteout. Why is it so complicated to do that? Too many steps, oh my gosh. I think it would just be simple, simpler to write. So the cool thing about that video, what I loved, was it's showing, it's true. They, they all thought it was kind of cool. But could you imagine if you walked in, some of those, what they called elders, which I would be offended if I were them, but the older individuals that came in, some of them loved the technology, others hated it. They're like, it's cool, yeah, hands off. So if you have a practice that mainly has an elderly or older population as far as your practice members, and you decide to go hardcore high tech, they're not going to love it. Now, they might still come in, but let me tell you, your CAs are going to hate you because they're going to say, what's this fobby thingy, Bob? And they're trying to shove it. I forgot my fob. I, I don't understand. Again, if you have a young population you're trying to attract and your office is sitting there with, um, you know, 1984 magazines and you keep your schedule on a piece of paper, and they're like, what do you mean you can't message me to send my appointments and you can't do these things? They want fast, they want now. So you need to ensure that your office and your practice is actually congruent with the type of patient that you are choosing to attract in your ideal patient. We've attracted them in. They walk in our door, they're like, woo, this is great. But this is part of why we have to, re to retain them. We need to ensure that everything is congruent. Congruency is the key. Marketing has to be congruent with your message, with your vision. If it's not, it doesn't matter because you're attracting the wrong people. One thing that's very, very powerful that I learned fairly early on in practice, although it was scary, is you can fire a patient and you can also qualify your patients. Qualify that they are well suited for your practice. Qualify that they are your ideal patient. And if they are not, refer them to someone else. I always joke, Dr. John Minardi and I uh, practice about five minutes apart from each other, so we always joke that the patients I choose to not qualify as ones I would love, I'm just going to send over to him. I'm like, he's like, oh, you're going to send me all the tough patients. I'm like, yep, send them on over. But uh, he's like, I'm going to do the same to you. 
And we actually have sent some patients back and forth, but it's worked because they are better suited to me or to him. So focus on that. You also want to make sure that your CAs, their message is congruent. If it's not, the buck stops here. You have not trained them properly because you are not clear on what your message is or your vision. And that's okay, so go home, figure it out. It takes work. The marketing, I found a program recently that I really like for marketing for my clinic because it is, um, I can use it for multidisciplinary aspects. So it has campaigns, all the posters are done, it's very user friendly for me. It's called Simpractic, I love it, but it's not for everyone. What I used is coaches. Coaches are what you also need to do. You need to fix here. You need to fix here. Figure out whatever system works for you and is congruent with your message. That's what you need to do. Office setup is important. I created um, my dream clinic five years ago. It was the clinic that was in my business plan in chiropractic college. I wanted a large multidisciplinary clinic. I wanted to build it out eco-friendly. I have cork floors. Let me tell you, walking on cork floors when you're standing all day is awesome. Highly recommend it. But color matters. So when I was choosing colors, don't just pick the pretty colors. You have to figure out what works for you, what resonates for you. We have an art store by my house, and there was this, and I kind of went on an art buying binge. My husband went, really? Another piece? I'm like, yeah, but I like it. You know how art just hits your gut? So there was this piece, and it's fairly large, and it's Bold colors, orange and red and yellow. It's kind of just abstract. And I loved it, but I left it behind. I went back later that day and bought it because I went, I can't live without it. When I see it, it gets me fired up. Have your clinic firing you up because you are attracting people that like you, that think like you as well. So choose the colors carefully. There's healing powers to color. I have green, which is health color. I also, healing colors. I also have orange because that's a fertility color, but I just love orange. I want to walk into my clinic and I want to be happy. So make sure your clinic is set up that way. If you are choosing to attract pediatrics and you say, but I love spa and I love white, the cortisol levels of those parents is through the roof. They're like, Susie, sit there. Do not touch, do not breathe because you're going to mess up the pretty white clinic. Not suitable. So figure that out. Lighting, I, I made sure that we had lights, LED lights, but that were full spectrum lights because I thought my CAs, I don't want them sitting underneath fluorescent tubes all day. I need them to be as healthy as possible. I need my team to work for me. Now I'm not saying go home, change, rip apart your whole clinic, but think about these things after you, as you change. Think about these things as you build out something new. They're all really important. The, this one study, the Walsh in 2004, I like that because it was actually based on elective surgeries for cervical and lumbar spine patients. All they did was put one on the light color of the room for semi-private room, the other one's on the dim, away from the window. Huge difference. Took 22% less analgesic medication per hour and 20% less medication costs just from being in the light. So try and have natural light or lights that mimic natural light. Nature goes a long way. You want to make sure that you have nature images. One study I really want to show is actually it can be simulated or virtual nature walk, and that's for breast cancer patients. And that was uh, Schneider in 2004. And it was breast cancer patients, and they, just, they actually just closed their eyes and went on a virtual nature walk. And they found that it reduced their anxiety and symptomatic distress as they were going through treatment. Just thinking about it. The other one is in 2003, blood pressure and pulse were lower on days, and this was at a blood donor clinic, and they were lower on days when the television showed nature images compared to just your regular TV. Now I apologize for some of the people that like to throw the advertisements all the way through. I'm not saying don't do that, but throw some nature pictures in there. That's why aquariums are great if you don't mind cleaning a fish tank. I don't love cleaning fish tanks. You know, a tiger lily that I wanted the fair lived for you know, three months, but that's the end of my fish tank days. So if you don't love it, figure out other ways that you can do it. But little nature goes a long way. And you need to make sure that in this uh, last study uh, by Leather in 2003, this was a neurology clinic, a neurologist clinic, and they just did a couple subtle changes in the decor. 
But what they found was people liked the way it looked. And so they found that they felt better. Their satisfaction was higher. So if you go home on Monday, what I challenge you is look around your clinic. See what it is saying. Is it congruent with your mission? Is it congruent with your message? Does it look tired? If it looks tired, I guarantee you're tired. What did we just do? We have to do a work weekend. We just came together because we thought, it's been five years in this clinic. It needs a little spruce up. Because you want people to come in thinking you're fresh, you're ready, you're on, and you're ready to attract them. So you can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? What do you guys think? Can we do this? You want to make sure that, thank you. I've got one who's on. So you want to make sure that what you are saying, you are actually showing. You are showing your team that you're serious. You're showing your team that you're willing to put in the work and the effort that's required. You're not saying, why aren't you getting in more kids? Well, they're like, why aren't you doing more? So really focus on that. Get the steps together. Get the ideas together. And I challenge you on Monday, go home, look at your clinic, talk to your team, get the message out there, and start figuring out who your ideal patient is so you can love what you do. Every day when you go in, you can feel passionate. We can serve more. We can serve bigger. We can save this world. Thank you.